against you in the North Carolina game. So that was a, another thing that happened in this game. We're going to Kansas. They play deep, uh, really good defense, too. I would guess that's the recipe. Hang on to the basketball and protect it, right? Yeah, on the road, you you got to understand, you you, you got to be gritty. You're not going to get reach-in fouls in this league. I, I said to one of our players right in front of the ref, it, it, it poked it out, and I'm like, I can't ask the ref to call that foul. It's, it, you, we've got to be – and I thought we adjusted, but we had 12 in the first half, two in the second. We got after our guys at halftime, <laughs> emphasized, like really thought that was like our main theme at halftime, and I thought we adjusted. We had two. We can't spot that kind of I – mean, we had a bunch where they just poked it out of our hand. Got to be more ball. Got to be tougher with the ball um, on these atmospheres that we're in on the road, and um, and that definitely. I mean, that was a, a big setback because we were doing some good things offensively. We made eight of our first ten shots. I didn't think. I, I thought we missed a lot of good open threes, but we started out made eight of our first ten shots. Did a lot of things we wanted to do, but man, we spotted them so many points off turnovers. So, and it, it, a lot of them we looked at it. A lot of them just ball toughness. We we we've really got to have ball toughness especially on the road. Yeah, I mean, I, you, you, I can't ask for – I'm not going to ask for a little reach-in fouls and poke fouls um, in this league on the road because I'm going to ask for a lot of other fouls. <laughs> Offensively or defensively? Uh, on, deep, on the defensive end, uh, in Fort Worth, and it kind of helped dig deeper into that. Yeah, we, we, we definitely had four uh, miscommunications on ball screens up at the top. It should have been switches they weren't, and they drove it in for a layup. That, we, we addressed that in the film. Here's the thing. You've got to over-communicate on the road. I mean, when you're screaming screen right or switch, that's got to be really loud. We're going to practice today with, with the noise because if you're at Allen Fieldhouse, I mean, you might not be able to hear this far away. So you better be, you better be on top of your communications, um, communication on, on defense. And, um, and that's what you got to learn from that because we did, we definitely had in the game, we, we, we counted four like that we, like they didn't hear or miscommunicated. It was either supposed to be a switch or a different coverage and that we've been good on all year. But there were definitely four that we got to give, and that's, that's a theme for this game. You know, we can't have, I didn't hear it. I mean, it's loud. It's what you guys want, right? You guys want to play in the best college basketball atmospheres. You got to over-communicate. We got to have elite huddles. We got to have elite huddles. You know, dead ball, free throws. They got to have elite, hey, this is what we're running next. Make sure we're on the same page. Make sure we know that call. I mean, we got to have elite huddles uh, on the road in these, in these atmospheres. Speaking of, I mean, you mentioned Allen Fieldhouse. What about this year's Kansas team? What have you seen from their first couple of games just up the play? Um, you know, the one thing about Kansas is, I know you all mentioned already just a second ago about how Coach Self's, you know, forever, so physical, so good defensively, so hard. The thing I don't think they get credit for is, is how well coached they are offensively. They are really smart, skilled action on offense. They can play. They can keep the, their offense running and keep going, you know. So a lot, a lot of offenses have one or two options in the beginning. They're as good as keep flowing through offense through the whole possession as anybody in the country, and that's why I don't think they get enough credit for. Because I mean, you think of Coach Self, you think of D, you think about just how nasty defensively and physical they are, but offensively, they can put you in a trick bag. I mean, they, they, they have a lot of different things. Now, all of a sudden, you have one of the hardest scouted guys I've ever had to do offensively. I mean, Hunter, Hunter is, Dickinson is just – he can shoot it. He can pass it. He can, he's a, a huge screen. <laughs> um, he keeps the ball high. Um, he, he seals. He, he, he really knows how to keep you sealed. Great footwork. Um, K.J. Adams is so valuable, so skilled, so smart, such a great passing big man. Dewan Harris – is 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 an elite point guard, and then you got McCullough, twenty a game, six rebounds, but he also, is, I mean, playing at a high level. They got, they they have four all league type players. Um, I think Furphy, their freshman, is really going to be an elite player. He already is, but he can make shots. He's athletic, um, so they're, they're they're a hard scout for a quick turnaround. And I say that because offensively, they keep their stuff going as well as anybody. Game plan or anything, but how do you go about slowing a guy like that down? 
It is. It's it's the biggest. It's it's a huge decision. I think you talk to anybody that plays Kansas so far this year. You start with what are you going to do with him? You know, how are you going to do your post D? How are you going to do your ball screen coverages? Those are big decisions you got to make right out of the gate, and uh, it's no different for us. He he is a definite key to the game. Um, he draws a lot of attention, um, but what makes him so hard is his IQ and his passing ability. Tremendous, tremendous passing ability from the block and from up top. I mean, he can pass from up top and he can pass from the block, which makes it makes it makes it difficult. As as foul trouble creeps in a bit more, what are you seeing from Caden Cooper, Luke Northweather? Yeah, got to be ready. Got to be ready. Um, with the physicality and that we got into and the, the got into foul trouble, um, you know, both those guys, Luke and, and Caden, are guys that got to be ready. We we constantly tell them that I know they haven't got the minutes yet, but this is a, a long league race, a physical league race. Those guys need to be ready. And, um, you know, sometimes you get in those non-conference games, um, especially with teams that aren't in our conferences, that sometimes maybe you say are in a lower conference, and sometimes there are hard matchups for a guy like Luke on the perimeter. Um, but then you get into the conference, all of a sudden you might have a bigger four-man. You know, you, you might be able to play him a little bit. Um, but I know he hasn't played much yet, but those guys got to stay ready. It's TCU, your bench didn't shoot threes really. I know you believe they can shoot us. You just yeah. send it back out there and keep shooting they, they got to. They got to. I mean, he can shoot. Yeah. He can shoot. Um, and uh, it's my job to keep pouring confidence, get him good shots. Um, and uh, and he is, as long as he's continues to play great defense. He's, he's an all-league defender player in his last league. He's done some great things defensively for us. Got total confidence in him. Um, and it's about me pouring into him and to let him know, you know, I said that to him after the, uh, the Monmouth game. I said, keep shooting. And he was th had three for four, big, three big ones against Iowa State. Um, he's made a lot in his career. He's an older guy. Um, he, everybody's gone through it. He's, I have total confidence. want him to keep shooting. You talked about uh, the, the difficulty of this league. What does is, what, is what happened Tuesday and Wednesday across the league say about the Big 12? The, the road. The, the road. I mean, it's it's just uh, it's just uh, the atmospheres, the the hard it is, to, you know, to turn around and you know, and the, the thing about it is too is is each game there's a level of when you get done, the physicality, the 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 emotional and physical, you know, what, what you just went through, and uh, we told our guys, hey, this is what it's about. I mean, you, there's no time to sit there and spend two days, you know, trying to say you're mentally or physically tired. There is no time to be tired. You know, you got to take care of your body. You got to. We got to recover. We got to get our minds sharp. It's one game after another. But all over the country, winning on the road at the highest level in the Big 12 is at a premium. If you can steal a road game, those are huge. And uh, but it's you know the atmospheres was, was, are are tough, and that's why I'm so much trying to get our atmosphere where it goes. And I, I thought we had a good start to our league atmosphere. Um, you know, with that, we'll talk about that when we get to our next home game. But that, that's why the atmosphere has got to be a six man. Porter, it seems like week 15, this is a matchup that a lot of fans really enjoy. A lot of talk about this may be the last game at the farm for a while. Is this a matchup you'd be interested in seeing continue in non conference games this year? And is that realistic? That, the, it, it's, a, it's very hard because Kansas doesn't do a lot of home and homes non conference because they have so many premier games like on, you know, these. Uh, you know, the uh, Champions Classic, but they got a lot of things. So, um, obviously, I'm not thinking about that right now, um, of future games at the Fog <laughs> Allen. I'm thinking about this one. Um, but, you know, scheduling, it's, it's, it's their story program. So, you, you, you never leave something off the table. Um, I know we've, I know, I'm sure it'll be come up at some point, but it's got to be a two way street. And they, I'm not so sure they like to do a lot of home and homes. And, and for us too, like we got Battle of Atlantis, we got the Jordan Brand games, we got we got a lot too. So it just everything is depends, and those that'll be a, t a conversation for a later date. Howard, you guys have been so close the last few times heading up to Lawrence. What do you feel like has been the difference in those games? How can you get over the hump this time? Yeah, I think we've watched them both, and they've come both games have come down to the last thirty seconds, which doesn't happen a lot. And you know, it's it's stressing communication, you know, stressing you know handling the the runs. Um, and, uh, you know, expect the physicality, expect transition offense. Their, their transition offense is in a different gear in that, that, are, that's, that, that, that building. You've got to really be on their, your transition offense. 
Hunter gives you one weapon that's uh, – he reminds me of, of this thing with the big kid I had at Loyola Crutwig. And John does it sometimes. Hunter can throw a 60-foot outlet pass. He can throw that Wes Unseld. He gets a rebound. He turns, and he throws a 60-foot outlet pass. You better not let the guys get behind you in transition because he has that in his bag. So, um, you know, I, I, you, we got, you, gotta, you really got to watch your, that transition game in that building. You got to watch your turnovers. You know, they, they turn turnovers into baskets in that building anywhere. So it's just taking care of a lot of, a, a lot of fundamental things. Communication, transition D, ball toughness, so that they just can't get these crazy runs. A lot of the pieces are different, but for Milo, Ortega, Sam, what can they take from last year's trip, experience, being in that atmosphere for this one? I thought the two grittiest guys on the last road game was Los and uh, Sam. Sam got in foul trouble, but you got, we got, you got to be gritty, man. We, we need to be more gritty this, this upcoming game. That starts with me. And, and everything, and that's that's what I I thought we were way more gritty in the second half at TCU, um, but our communication wasn't on, and our turnovers in the first half. But you got to be gritty, man. You it is it is not going to be easy anywhere to win on the road. It's not easy. So when 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 it's in life, when things aren't easy, you've got to be tougher. You've got to be mentally tougher, physically tougher, to fight through hard. And that's what this road is in the Big Twelve. It's hard. You got to fight through it. You got to be gritty. You got to be willing to get bumped. Ball toughness. So that's what we got to take. And I thought Los and Sam were the two grittiest guys there. Now we need everybody on board to be way more, way tougher and grittier um, in, in this league on the road, especially. You talk about uh, scheduling difficulty. Is it good for college basketball that so many of the premier non-conference games wind up happening in neutral sites versus campus sites? Um, there's there's a lot of good for them. There's there's TV, there's venues, there's atmospheres. You know, with the net, it, it, a, a, a neutral win is 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 a little bit more lenient because it's a bigger range. I think it's one through sixty or something, uh, the exact number. So, um, not everyone wants to play true road games because especially a league like ours, you have so many of them. You know, um, but you're you're in these tournaments, you're in these challenges, you're in you know, you're in the SEC challenge or Big East challenge, whatever challenge you're in. Then you're in these events, so you you start to stack up a lot of games. So the home and homes are become an an issue. So I don't know if it's good or bad. It's just it, it's part of what we're doing.